This symbolic victory happens at the exact same time Xi Jinping becomes the new president of China. This changes the world stage. With his climate speeches and his planetary vision of the new Silk Roads, Xi Jinping gives a new direction to this gestating China Arctic project, taking it further than any of his predecessors. Now there is more of a vision of China actually wanting to play a role in the international system of taking up its great power position. The political level interest in the Arctic is, has really gone way, way up since President Xi uh, took power. Fondamentalement, ce qui change, c'est cette dimension civilisationnelle. Cette idée que, à travers l'Arctique, la Chine peut apporter quelque chose qui va impacter le reste du monde, aussi bien d'un point de vue scientifique que sur les autres points, économiques, énergétiques et autres. After the subprime crisis, a new crisis unexpectedly placed the Arctic into Beijing's hands. Russia's annexation of Crimea in early 2014. The international community turns against Moscow. Sanctions are imposed. The main goal is to isolate Russia. До Крыма, когда Речь еще шла про возможность активного сотрудничества с Западом. Конечно, Китай был не на первых полосах. In this new post-sanction world, Vladimir Putin welcomes Xi Jinping with honor. The relationship between the two countries has been gradually warming up since Mao's death. It speeds up as both Beijing and Moscow come under Western criticism. The reluctance that one might expect between two superpowers rapidly dissolves in the face of common interests. Russia needs money and technology, while China needs natural resources in order to sustain its growth. They talk business. Yamal in the Russian Arctic changes everything. China is given a golden opportunity to gain a firm and lasting foothold in the high north. Yamal is one of the largest liquid gas sites in the world and it is crucial for Russia. Beijing thus becomes Yamal's savior on Moscow's demand. Поэтому говорить про то, что смогли бы мы развивать Ямал без Китая, скорее нет, чем да. Потому что не зря для Ямала требовались китайские деньги. It was tremendously hyped in Russia at the time. And they were effectively saying, we don't care about you Europeans, we got the Chinese. We don't hear that much about that any longer. I think the Russians are aware of the fact that even if they look very big on a map, and they are very big, um, their economy is smaller than a province of China. Uh, so they are slightly cautious of where this development is going to end up long term. In this forgotten corner of the Arctic, the Chinese can finally demonstrate the extent of their polar commitment. For those who might have been wondering about their aspirations, Yamal provides an answer. The Chinese companies take over 30% of the project and are able to experience the high north on a large scale.